Okay, antique Bible reading number 11. We left off with the uh, founders or eminent heads of religious denominations. And this is uh, noteworthy because this is a Protestant Bible, obviously. And you will note that they do not, I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked yet. Nope, they do not have any saints. They do not have any of the early church saints or holy fathers. They don't have people of the seventh ecumenical count or seven ecumenical councils. They just ignore the first thousand years of Christianity completely. And the reason for this is because if they actually looked at the first thousand years of Christianity, they wouldn't really have a leg to stand on because their teachings are not orthodox they're not christian they're um they they take away from and add to it now you can screenshot any one of these and zoom in on them and uh do your own research i've read about some of these i i haven't read about all of them but i've read about the main ones and uh there's tens of thousands of different denominations now. I mean, it's just gotten ridiculous. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on looking at those. Um, historical illustrations of Bible text derived from ancient coins and gems, including, oops, excuse me, uh, uh, of the period of time from Alexander the Great to the destruction of Jerusalem, including Greek, Roman, and Hebrew money drawn from the original ancient coins in the British Museum, London, and collections in Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, Berlin, Rome, and in the United States. Interesting side note not mentioned here is um, a lot of people don't realize that, I mean, I don't mean to boo-poo or poo-poo the um, secular um, scholastic scholars who are, have unintentionally, perhaps in many cases, um, proved the validity of the writings of the early church in their efforts to scientifically discern what the truth and what was really going on back in those days. Uh, a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. But a great deal of work's been done to uh, figure out which writings were real and which ones were forgeries. Um, so here is uh, some drawings of the coins of Alexander and his successors. For the time of Alexander the Great of Macedonia, there were no portraits on coins, except of Galen and Hiero at Syracuse in Sicily. I was stationed in Sicily for a year. It's a beautiful place. Uh, Philip, the father of Alexander, left no portrait, his coins bearing a head of Zeus, Jupiter or Hercules, the local deity of the country, was honored on the coins of each as Minerva at Athens, 84, uh, Arethusa at Syracuse, 107, uh, Minotaur in Crete, 142, Apollo and Diana in many cities and nearly every other divinity, hero or heroine or deified ruler, including also animal forms and mythical figures mentioned in the ancient classics. The Greeks were the earliest people to make and use coins with an image stamped on them, and also to make them depositories of portraits and figures of persons and objects which have become a great value in the historical student or to the historical student, adding much to our knowledge of antiquity. 
The kingdom of Alexandria, uh, Alexander was too vast to hold together under any other ruler, and his generals assumed royalty after his death, and each seized a portion. Uh, Seleucus, who had been made, oh, don't go too fast, satrap of Babylonia, founded the Syrian monarchy. Ptolemy, see dictionary page 80, a half-brother of Alexander, founded the dynasty of Greek Ptolemies in Egypt. The Symmachus obtained Thrace, um, Antipater and Caterus jointly had Macedonia and Greece. Antiochus I was son of, and successor of Seleucus, uh, Seleucus, excuse me, the first, and was honored with the title Soter or Savior for his military successes. Antiochus II, his son, was called in flattery Theos. In other words, God, and was the first of the name mentioned in the Bible. See Dictionary, page 7. The first Seleucus mentioned was the fourth, who was called Patriot, uh, Philopater. Although he is said to have greatly increased the already heavy taxes, the third Antio uh, Antiochus earned the title the Great for the oh, for his military genius, although defeated by the Roman general Galabrio at Thermopylae in Greece, and again by Scipio at Magnesia in Asia Minor. When he lost a great territory and paid 15 millions to the Romans for the expenses of the war. The custom of the Seleucid kings in Syria was to adopt the names Seleucus or Antiochus alternately in succession. So the son and the successor of Antiochus the Great was called Seleucus the Fourth, and his brother who was succeeded him was Antiochus the Fourth. Epiphanes, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, Epiphanes or Epiphanes. I'm I'm thinking it's Epiphanes, just because the way they speak over there. See his coin in dictionary page eight, and the student will find. Many incidents of the history of these kings in the Acre, uh, Acre, Acrefa, excuse me, in, Mac, in Maccabees and in Josephus. The likeness of Antiochus IV is here and of the sixth in the dictionary, page 8. Demetrius I, son of Seleucus, uh, Seleucus IV, was educated in Rome and succeeded Antiochus IV, whom he deposed. He was killed in battle against Alexander I. Ballas, Baal, Lord, see the coin dictionary, page 6, who claimed to be a son of Antiochus IV, and who, oh, my phone's dying, and who succeeded to the throne. This Cleopatra was third of the name among the Greek kings in Syria, was very talented, the wife of three successive kings of Syria and another of two others. See, uh, see coin 15. All right, so I'm, my battery's dying and we got a lot more to read about, so I'm going to stop there. Say your prayers. God bless you, over and out.